Hey guys, welcome to Tony's How To Use. In this video, we'll be showing you how to use WordPress, the ultimate guide. So we have a lot of topics here to discuss. So let's start with how to make a website on WordPress. So there's actually multiple ways on you for you to actually create your website. So you could either go to WordPress.com and basically start creating your website. But for WordPress.com, you actually have to buy the premium for this one to actually have the premium uh, capabilities or features for this one. Like, for example, installing your plugins and having the other teams available to you. But there's actually a free way for us to actually do this. So let's go ahead and do that. So here, the free way of actually creating your website is actually via the Pantheon.io website. So it's actually really easy to use. All you need to do here is create your account and start building your website. So if you want to log in via your email or sign up via your email, you could go ahead and do that. But I would suggest you to connect your Pantheon account via your Google account here for easy access. So since I already created my account, just click on connect with Google. Now, once you've connected your account with Google and Pantheon, in here, the first thing that you want to do is you want to go to the section that actually creates a website. So in here, what you want to do is you want to go to the section of sites in the left section of your screen. And from here, you'll be able to see all of the sites. So if you don't have a site yet, it's going to be empty here. So to start creating your site, just click on the top right of the screen that says create this new site. Now from here, it's going to load the next UI. And from here, you want to choose WordPress. So just choose WordPress for this one. Now in here, you want to enter your Pantheon site. So for example, we want to enter this as the name, but we just want to add a few things here. Like for example, one, two, three. Now here you want to choose region for your site. So I'm going to choose Australia for this one and just click on continue. Now here it's going to load the dashboard section. So just let, let this load up properly and it's going to deploy, deploy your WordPress website. So wait for this to complete and we'll be back. Now here it's going to say, deploying WordPress. Now here it's going to say also complete. Now here just click on visit your Panther inside dashboard. Now from here it's going to load up the next UI which is the dashboard for the site itself. So there's a few tabs that you could visit here like the test, the uh, this means the test environment for your website and also the live environment for your website. But the focus right now is the dev tab here, which is the development side for your website. Now here, what you want to do is you want to visit the development side. So just click on visit development side. It's going to load up your WordPress website. Now here, it's going to ask for the language that you want to use. So let's just choose English and just click on continue. Now here, it's going to ask for your site title. So let's just choose this one. It's going to also ask for your username. So enter your username. And here, just enter your password, your email, and from there, just click on install WordPress. Now here, you just need to click on log in. And from there, you just need to enter your username and your password as well to start editing your website. Now here, it's going to say, welcome to WordPress. Now to set up your website, the first thing that you want to do here is you want to set up your team. So just click on appearance and you want to click on teams. So there's a lot of teams that you could choose from here. So choose the appropriate one on what website you want to use. So here, for example, we want to use the 2020 team here and just click on activate. And in here, if you want to customize your team, just click on customize. But you could also go to appearances here. You'll also see the customize button. So just click on customize. And here, there's a lot of things that you could change, which is the site identity, which is basically the tagline as well as the site icon. So if you want to edit that, go ahead and upload your icon there. So let's just go back here. You also have the team options, which is the full text and summary for your archive page and post show, and also the enable show search in header. Now here, we also have the cover template which is the settings for the cover template page template, add a feature image to use a background. So if you want to edit that, go, go ahead. 
Now we also have the background image, the menus, and the widgets. So the widget section is actually really helpful. So if you want to add a footer here, as well as the second footer, you can go ahead and do that. So do be warned, the type of widgets that you could basically use here actually depends on the team that you are currently using. So sometimes teams would have sidebars. So if you want sidebars into your website, make sure that you use a team that actually uses sidebars. So let's just go back here. So we also have the homepage settings here. From here, you'll be able to see the your homepage is placed. So if you want a static page, go ahead and do that. But you could also po uh, show your latest post. Now in here, the uh, homepage section, you could choose that as you can see here. And you also have the post page. Now let's just go back again. And we also have the additional CSS. So if you have additional CSS, like for example, you want to change the font for this specific section, or you want to change a specific section, like for example, the background for this specific section, then you'll be able to use it via the C additional CSS section. And from here, you could just basically start editing your website. So like I mentioned before, the settings or the things that you could actually edit on your website actually depends on your team. So make sure that you actually explore the team first before, start, before you actually start editing your website and making things final. Now here, let's just go back to see other things into our website. Now, if you're doing blogs, then I would suggest you to visit the section that says post. Now in here, you'll be able to see all the posts that you've posted. So if you haven't entered anything, by default, it's going to say hello world. So this is the default post on every WordPress website. So if you want to delete this, you can just basically hover over it and just click on trash. But if you want to add a new post or this one, just click on add a new. And from here, you'll be able to start editing or adding your post. So you can add your title, choose a block, and you could basically add other things here like images, gallery, less codes, and you can even browse all the features that you can add here. So you can even add an audio, file, cover, video, a lot of things you could do here with WordPress. Now in here, you can just basically customize this one. There's a lot to discuss for this one. And you can just basically be creative about this one. And that's about it. And that's how you get started on creating your website on WordPress. And basically that's it. How to log in WordPress dashboard. So sometimes when you visit your website and unfortunately you can't go back and to your admin dashboard. So sometimes this bar would actually disappear if you're no longer locked in. So just to show you, I'm going to log out from my account here. So just click on it and just click on lock out. And when we actually reload our website here, as you can see, my bar top bar is no longer appearing here. So how do I actually access my admin dashboard? So there's actually two ways you could actually access this one. So the first way that I would suggest to you, if you're using the default team for WordPress, at the very bottom, you should be able to see the section that says locked in. But like me right now, since I'm using a custom theme on my website, then I won't have that option. So how do I access that? So as long as you got your website's link here, then you are now ready to actually access your admin website or dashboard. So here, first thing is you want to click on your URL and make sure that you're at the very end of your URL. Now here type in the following, which is slash admin and just hit on enter. So once you hit on enter that, it's going to ask you to enter your username as well as your password. So once you've entered your username and password, you'll be able to log in. So let me just enter my details real quickly. Now here, the next thing that you want to do is you just need to log in. But to, uh, for some reason, for you to actually avoid to having to do this anytime, then I would suggest you to actually click on remember me so that every time you uh, enter slash admin, you won't have to log in again. It's going to remember that you are the user using this computer specific account in this specific browser. So let's just click on remember me and just click on log in. And as you can see, I am now in my admin dashboard. Now, another thing that you could do to actually visit your admin 
dashboard here. So instead of typing admin, just admin, you could actually type in the following as well, which is WP dash admin. I just hit on enter. It's going to do the same thing. But since I already logged in, I won't be prompt to log in into my account. It's going to redirect me directly into my admin dashboard. And that's about it how to open WordPress dashboard. So the first thing that you want to do here is you want to visit your website. So as you can see right now, this is my website and I don't see the functions for me to actually redirect myself into my dashboard. So there's an actually an easy way for us to do this. So just go to your URL section here and you want to go to the very end, make sure that you haven't or you're not currently highlighting the whole link here. And what you want to do is you want to type in the following, which is slash then I want to type in admin and just hit on enter. So once you hit on that, you'll be led into the login page for WordPress. So you just need to click or enter your details. But if you log in via Google, you could go ahead and choose Google and choose the account where you've set up your account. So once you've done that, the next thing that you want to do is you will be able to see the admin web page or the dashboard for your website. Now, how do you do this the other ways here? So you could also do this the same way. You want to go to URL and you want to type in wp-admin. Just hit on enter and that will actually do the same thing for you. Now, if you don't want to do this manually, like every time that you go to your admin, like for example, you just want to directly go ahead and log in, but you have your link here, but you want to directly go ahead and go to your admin or dashboard uh, every time you click on a specific link, well, it, it's actually a lot faster. We could actually do this by adding a section on our navigation here. So let's go back into our not dashboard here and we want to go to appearance and under appearance is we want to go to menus. So in the menus, as you can see right now here, when we click on it, you'll be able to see all the menus that are currently available. So what we want to do is we want to actually add our link that we want to add so that we could easily access our dashboard. So here, let's go back here in appearances. And what we want to do is we want to go to custom links and we want to type in our URL here. Same thing, you just need to copy your link here. And at the very end, you just need to type in admin. So we will do the same thing. And what you want to do here in the link text is you want to uh, name this as login. So here, just click on add to menu and make sure that you save this first before continuing. So here, just click on save menu. So once you've done that, and once we reload our website here, you should be able to see the login page for your website. So let's just wait for it to load properly. And just here, let's just reload this one. So here, just click on the section here for your navigation. Just click on login. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to go to your dashboard here. But yeah, if you don't want to do this via your uh, navigation here. So if your site or team actually supports a footer, you could actually add that into your footer if you want to. Or if you have widgets, for example, let's go to widgets in here. And I want to add this into my sidebar. So for example, so here I want to add a new section and I want to add a button. Let's just click on buttons here and we want to name this as login and what we want to do is we want to click on this one and you want to click on the link icon there just type in your url which is admin here and once you're done the next thing you want to do is you want to update this one and wait for it to load up so when it's when it's it updated you'll be able to reload this one and when we click on the gear icon here on our side on our sidebar you'll be able to see the login button and we, when we click on that it should lead you into your section here so make sure that it's actually working properly it's just click on it now as you can see when i click on it it's going to load properly or load my dashboard here and yeah so there's multiple ways on how you could access this you can just work around make sure that you have the admin link first just add admin at the very uh, end and from there you could use that link save it somewhere maybe add it into your site or hide it in your site where you're the only one that can actually access that and yeah so that's about it how to change theme in wordpress website
So sometimes when we change team on roleplay uh, WordPress, we might encounter issues on actually on how our sites will work in the future. That for example, some features like widgets and a lot of the, a lot of other custom customizations we made on the website might not work properly when we change our theme. So there's a few things that we should do first. So if your website is fairly big or your website is really big and you use it for your business, then I would suggest you to use a cloud hosting that I would suggest you, which is Kinsta. So you could deploy your website via this one and basically manage your websites through this one. So before you actually start creating or uh, transferring or changing your WordPress, I would suggest you to create a staging website or a staging site for your website first. And the staging site is you want to apply your changes there first before pushing it into live. So yeah, but if you don't, if you're not using, for example, you're not using a lot of uh, information or your website's not that big, then this, is, this will be a lot easier. So yeah, how do you actually change your website or your team here? So the first thing that you want to do is you want to go to the section that's called appearances. Now here you'll see team, so just click on teams. Now in here, we'll be able to see different teams that we could use. So there's a lot to choose from, but yeah, let's go to free for this one. And when we go to the very bottom, we should be able to see all the teams at the very bottom. Now here, before we actually start applying our team into our website is we want to first preview it. So there's actually a live preview mode where we could actually view the site in that team to see if there are any issues. Now here, let's go ahead and just click on the tree dotted icon that you see here and you'll see the try and customize. So when we click on that, it's actually going to load up the live preview and you'll be able to see the website or your website here. So it's going to actually get your uh, information from your side and you'll be able to see your navigation here and all of the information that you already have so yeah it's basically a, a basic um, preview you could basically just uh, change like for example something went wrong in about or in this specific section of your website you just basically adjust it before you can actually before you uh, start applying it like for example this section is broken you can customize this one but yeah, let's go here let's go to contact here yeah basically you just need you could basically adjust or customize this one if there's any broken or any broken stuff here and yeah so if you're really satisfied with the design right now and there's nothing wrong with the website itself and or if you already fix some of the issues that's happening here on your theme here uh you could basically just start activating this one so to activate it you just need to click on activate and save and from there it should be applied on your website so just wait for this to apply here quickly and here, as you can see, it's going to say, thank you for choosing Hexa. So we already applied this into our website. So now, since we already applied it into our website, we now want to go to the customization. So let's go to customize. Then from here, it's going to load up the previous UI that we just went through and basically adjust our team here. So yeah, so if you're, like I said before, you have to ensure that all of your uh, settings or all of the parts on your website is actually fixed before you apply it. So if you found any issues uh, on the customize, in the customize page in the live preview, then I would suggest you to apply it first in your staging area. So yeah, once, once you've applied it in your staging area, you could go ahead and uh, add plugins and maybe try fixing it. If And if you f f finally solve those issues, you could go ahead and push this into your live website. And yeah, so that's about it. But if you're using the basic one, so you're just uh, trying to blog and here it's pretty easy. You just need to go to appearances, teams and apply that specific team and you should be good how to change header logo and WordPress. So the first thing that you want to do here is we want to go to appearance. So under appearance, you'll be able to see different settings here, but what we're looking for is the customized setting or appearance here. Just click on it. 
and from here it's going to load up a new page here and there's a lot of things to digest so here we have colors background menus content options widgets and a lot of other stuff but the main important thing here is we want to go to the site identity now in the site identity we have the logo section in here we will be able to edit our site title our tagline and our site icon as well so if you want to add your logo here just click on select a logo and from here you'll be able to choose from your media files if you've already uploaded images here or you could basically upload your files here at the top left so if you want to upload just click on select files and from here you could choose the image that you want to use so for example i want to use an image that i just recently downloaded so i want to use this one just click on open now here it's going to start downloading it's going to transfer it into my media library and from here you could choose the image that you want to use so once you're satisfied in here you could basically add it uh, to uh, edit the title alternate text if it, the image is not working we also have the caption and description so it also has the file url here as well so yeah so just choose the one that you want to use and just click on select from here it's going to give you an option to crop it if you want to so i'm just gonna quickly crop this one and from here just click on the crop image or if you want to script skip cropping you could go ahead and do that just click on crop image and from there it's going to start updating my site here as you can see it is now my uh, header logo and yeah so for you to apply your changes and you just need to click on save changes so now when we go to our home page here and view our site as you can see right now it's going to reflect that header logo into our site now and that's about it how to change header color and wordpress so the first thing that you want to do here is you want to go to your site so i have my site here so i want to change the color of the header section here that's uh, the background for site title so how do you actually change this one so to change this one we'll have to access the additional css section for this one but before we go there we have to first identify which part we are actually editing so here just right click anywhere on your website and you want to go to inspect now in inspect it's going to bring up some some kind of code here but don't be um surprised for this one and don't be overwhelmed because it's gonna be really easy so it's going we're going to search for the code section that says a site title so let's just click on the arrow or select an element icon here and here what you want to do is you want to hover over this section here and you want to click on it now from here it's going to actually select that specific header or that specific section as you can see it's being highlighted at the right section or in this panel here as you can see we can see the header tag here as well as the id and class so what we are needing here is the id of the header itself so it's going to be math head so here since you already have the mass head id the next thing we want to do is we want to go to the bottom side which is the styles as you can see the style section is actually uh the section or code section or the css that's actually uh editing or adding style into our website so just a quick overview we for websites we have html and css the html br uh, brings up the uh, skeleton of the whole site i mean it gives the parts and what uh, things should how things should move or how should things should be structured now if you're talking about css these are the style meaning this is the design or how things should look or how should things is colored or how should things uh should probably look like so it's basically it's this, the design so css is design and html is the skeleton so that's that's the overview about this one so what we are going to do is we are basically editing our css so since we got our id from html here then we are now ready to edit our css because we'll be needing our id to edit our css so as you can see right now i'm in my style section and I, what i want to do is i want to change the background color for this one so next thing is we want to enter this one so don't worry it is actually a very simple code that we'll be adding so it's going to be background dash color colon space orange 
and semicolon. So you could use any color if you want. You could go to Google and just type in color picker and you could use any set hex here. So let's just choose another one that's actually here. So you're going to use the hex one instead of just the simple color, but you could use yellow, the word yellow itself if you want to. But yeah, so it's gonna. this is going to be the code background dash color colon and here the color the hex and in a semicolon so just want to copy this one and when we go here at the id remember this is the id that we identify here we want to add this code so when we add when we add this code as you can see the background color has now changed so when since we've already identified which part and what's going to look like we are now ready to apply this into our website itself so let's just copy this one real quickly, the ID as well as the code here. So let's just paste it here. And as you can see, the only thing that we need here is the background color. So we can remove the other stuff that's always included into our copy. And from here, just copy this one. And the next thing we want to do is we want to go to home here. Next thing we want to go to appearance. And here we'll be able to see the additional CSS. Now, when we go to additional CSS, it's, it's supposed to be giving you a section where you could paste your code. So once you paste your code, you'll be able to see the changes appear on your website itself. But as of this moment, CSS customization is actually part of the premium plan. So if you want to customize your header, then you'll have to upgrade your plan. So just click on upgrade now. They have uh, a lot of of plans available for you you could just choose the one that best suits you and yeah so yeah so that's about it you just need to add a little bit code into your website and you'll be able to change your header background color and that's about it how to edit footer in wordpress so there's actually two ways for us to actually edit our footer so the first way that i'll be showing you is via the menus so in your team that you're currently using, you might have the section that says menu. So just go here under appearances and you'll see the menu section. Now here in menus, in the menu setting, you should be able to see this section that says footer menu. So it's going to say footer there. It's going to, it's what it basically says is you can actually add a menu on your footers. So yeah, so that's basically one of the ways for you to actually add or edit your photo in WordPress. But unfortunately, right now, with the different teams that we have right now on WordPress, uh, this section might not be available for all teams. So in actuality, editing footers on WordPress differs on the type of team that you are currently using. So sometimes teams will have the option for you to edit your footer, footer menus here, but sometimes you won't have that option. So yeah, so if you want to add your footer or the footer itself, which is the second method of, uh, of us actually editing our footer, well, you'll have to consider on actually changing your team if that is the case. So sometimes Teams doesn't have the footer section at all. That's why you might want to consider changing your Teams. So let's just go to Teams here and we want to search for a team that we could actually use or edit the footer for. So here, let's go to Business and Free. And here, you'll be able to see all of the teams that you could actually use to edit your footer. So for example, we want to use this one. Let's just activate it real quickly. And once it activates, let's just customize this. So here we are now in the customize page. So what we want to do is we want to go to the section that says widgets. Now under widgets, if you're lucky enough, you should have the section that says footer. So most of the time, the footer section is available for website that is under the category for business in your team section. So usually business uh, teams have the footer section. So if you want to edit your footer, if for example, we have footer one, two, three, four, you could basically start adding your footer. So footer is actually, footer widgets here is actually a specific section here that we could add our details. So for example, we want to add this one, just click on and got it. So here, just click on the add block section here. And when we say footer one, widget so here just click on copy copy this one 
sorry uh you have to next add your paragraph here and uh, here just click on uh, the text that you want to paste and from here as you can see we we now added our footer now if you want to add new sections here you can just basically add it here but we first have to add our paragraph again so then paste your text here as you can see we're just adding new sections here now you could actually add columns for this one like for example we want to add three columns here and basically add paragraphs if we want to here add paragraph and here add another paragraph and as you can see it's just repeating itself over and over again and yeah so that's how you add your uh, footer here so it actually depends on the team itself at the if the footer section will be available for edit but yeah so most of the time uh, the usual way is via the widget section which is widget for the widget so you could add, add your widgets there if you want how to add menu in wordpress so how do we add our native navigation so with the latest teams on wordpress usually it's on the appearance and here we want to go to editor so usually we have the navigation itself under the appearances but with the latest teams now on wordpress we now have it under editor now here we want to go to navigation and here we have the navigation section so we want to edit this one so just click on the edit button you see there and from here we can start editing or adding our um, navigation here or our menus so to add a menu you want to click on the add block section here and from here you want to actually add your pages so as you can see it's going to automatically suggest you pages that you could actually use so since I already have these pages here, I'm just going to use this one. So maybe this list of post page here, you will choose this one. And from here, I've just successfully added my page. So when, when I actually click on save here and save. So when I reload my page here, you'll be able to see the added menu here. As you can see, there's the list of posts. Now, how do you add the actually sub menus? How do you add that? So first here is you want to go to the menu itself. And from here, you will see the sub menu button here at, that says add sub menu. And from here, just click on it and just click on add link. And from here, it's going to automatically suggest other pages that you could use, but you could type in anything that you, you might find here. So for example, you want to add a sub menu for a category. So I have a category that's named actually sample category. So we're just going to add that one here. And also we want to add a contact page as well. So let's just type in contact and from here once you're done but you can change a lot of things here if you want to if you want to make it bold and um, one up and yeah so let's just click on the save button here at the top right just click on save and when we actually reload our site here we'll be able to see that we just added our sub menu so it's actually really easy and really super easy to do. Now, if you want to add your specifically, like for example, you have you want a specific uh, thing happening here, is you could actually choose the custom link section here. Here, so URL. So maybe we want to add a Google.com here, just as an example. So you can add Google.com here here link just choose this one and if you want to customize this one for example we're just gonna say google for this one delete the other stuff and here want to click here and we actually click on this it's gonna say google just click on save and save and when we go back into our website you should be able to see google here so when we click on google it's going to redirect us to google so now, how do you do this the old fashioned way? How do you do it? So let's just go back into our main menu here in my home page. And we want to actually change to a team that's actually a lot older. So let's just go here to appearances and want to go to teams and choose a team that's a lot older than usual. Yeah, because if you're using older teams here, it's going to be very different. So let's just find an older team here. 
So we've successfully updated or changed our team to a older one. And as you can see right now, we have the menu section here. So we won't be able to actually change the menus via the uh, other way, which is the latest way, but this is the old way of changing menus. So just click on menus here. So here it's actually pretty easy to use if you want to. So here it's going to give you items uh, you could actually add to your menu. But first you have to name your menu here. So I just named it sample and just click on save menu here. So here, one of the things that you want to do here is you want to add your pages because right now it shouldn't have the menus at the moment. So here we want to add our menus. So click on the pages that you want to add as a menu. So I'm just going to choose a tree, this tree and just click on add to menu. So it's going to add it here on the right side. And let's just wait for this to load up quickly. Now it's already added here. Now, how do you actually edit it once you've added? So here we have the navigation level. We also have the original here. If you, this is the original. And yeah, so if you want to position this, you can just basically drag and drop it somewhere here if you want to. And yeah, you could also add post. If you have post there, you could add it as a navigation if you want to. You also have custom links like what we did before with Google. And we also have the categories like what we did before. So you just need to add your categories under the section for posts here. Add your categories and you could add your categories here. Now, one more thing is you could actually adjust this few things here. So let's just add another page here, which is a list post and multi column text headline. Just click on add to menu. So how do you add your submenus? So to add your submenus, you just need to position it correctly here. So for example, we want to position this as the submenu. So how do you do that? The first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you're directly under the menu that you want to make this as the submenu. So here, you're just going to drag it at the right section until you see the uh, block section there uh, have an indention here and just click on drag it here. And it's going to be a sub item for that menu. So you could just do this for other stuff here. So it's uh you could make this a sub menu of the sub menu here if you want to. And yeah, so just click on save menu. So once we save this and reload our page, we should be able to see our changes. Also, one more thing before you publish or save this, make sure that you uh, set the display location as primary. So you'll be able to see this menu here. So here I've already reloaded this. As you can see, I have my menus here. So when we go to about, as you can see, this is the sub menus here and yeah so yeah so that's basically how you add your menus here and sub menus on wordpress and that's about it how to add pop-up and wordpress so the first thing that you want to do is you want to go to wordpress.com and log in into your account so once you've logged in your, your account you will be ready to edit your website now to add a pop-up into your website we'll have to use a plugin so by default, we don't have the functionality to have pop-ups if we don't add any plugins. So whether you go to the theme section here or just basically changing it to another theme, you won't have the pop-up option available anywhere. So you have to basically use a plugin for this one. So here, first thing is you want to go to the plugin section. And from here, you have the option to search for the plugins that you want to use. So one of the plugins that I will suggest for you to use is the plugin that's called Hustle. So just search for it. So here it's going to say Hustle, email marketing, lead generation this is the one. Set up email opt-in forms, pop-ups, newsletter forms, and subscription forms to generate email leads with the best marketing pop-up builder. So here you can basically just install this app uh, plugin into your account or into your website and basically you could edit your or add your pop-ups here so for you to actually add plugin into your account is you need to have a business plan active so if you see the upgrade and activate plan here you can just basically click on it and here you could as you can see there is a business plan for me and i could just click on upgrade and activate the plugin so once you're sure you can just go ahead and get your business plan and install this plugin 
So if you're not sure with this plugin or you're having any or if you're having issues on using Hustle, then I would suggest you to use another pop-up that is available on the plugin section. So this is actually called Pop Up Maker. And there. So this is the one here, which is Pop Up Maker. So as you can see, looking to boost your marketing lead gen efforts. And yeah, you just basically just click on it. But same thing, you need to have a business plan in order to install any plugins into your website. How to add sidebar in WordPress. So there's actually multiple ways to get sidebars. But the most fundamental thing that you have to remember here is sidebars are actually dependent on what team you are currently using. So here, let's just choose a team that we could actually use to edit our sidebars. So let's just go here into appearances and go to teams. And here we want to go to the free section. And here let's go to the very bottom because sometimes teams on the very bottom are the ones that has the sidebar. So here just click on it and just click on activate design. And I understand activate. Now here, let's wait for this to load up and we want to customize this design. So usually if you're editing a sidebar, it's usually located underneath the widgets section. So when you click on that, you should be able to see the sidebar section. So in here, you could basically edit it, but sometimes it's not going to look properly. So you have to really find the correct type of theme for you to use for your website. As you can see right now, I'm just going to add a block for this sidebar one. I'm just going to add a paragraph for this one. And maybe I want to type in testing this sidebar. And when we actually view it here, we won't be able to automatically see it here because usually it's actually hidden at the top here. That's where the, uh, the gear icon is. As you can see, this is testing this sidebar. So yeah, so this is one of the ways that you could add it, but unfortunately right now it's not in the side. It's not technically a sidebar, but it is a sidebar function. So yeah, it actually depends on the team that you're going to use. You could just basically go back. Let's just go back here. Let's go back to our dashboard and we want to go to teams again. So if you're looking for the right team to use that, that has the sidebar on it, you just want to click on it or for example here, you want to open the live demo first to see if there are any sidebars that you could actually edit. So if you don't see any sidebars, you can just go ahead and go back. But one more thing that you could do here to search for sidebars or teams that use sidebars is you want to just type in sidebar and you should be able to see teams or results about that. So as you can see, I'm just going to type in sidebar here, sidebar. And as you can see, there's already a suggestion that you could use here. So left sidebar, right sidebar, and yeah. So most of this is going to be free or it's either paid. So you have to pay for this one if you want to use that specific team. But they also have community teams here, if you notice. So there's multiple teams that you could use. You could actually search this on community forums where teams that has sidebars on it. And yeah. So if you have community teams, like for example, you'll be able to download the zip file itself and you want to upload it in your website. So if you want to do that, let's go here at same thing in the team section. If you have your zip file, you could go ahead and install a new team here, but you'll have to have the business plan for this one to unlock the uh, custom up upload or installation of your teams here. So you won't be able to do it on free mode. But yeah, if you don't want to upload it and don't want to be messy about it, or if you're uh, not hosting your WordPress website and your own servers, then you just want to host it in via WordPress.com, then I would suggest you to just add a plugin. So there's multiple plugins that you could be you basically use here. So one of the plugins that I would suggest you to use is the lightweight, lightweight widget area. So here, lightweight widget area plugin content aware. 
So it's going to display new sidebars on any posts, page category, etc. Works with classic widgets, block widgets, and all teams. So if you install this widget here, you'll be able to see another section here that says content aware. And from there, you'll have the option to edit your sidebar, which is really cool if you're going to ask me. So, but unfortunately, if you're going to try and install this, it, it actually requires also an upgrade of your plan. So you have to have the paid plan on WordPress to install widgets. Now, another plugin that I would suggest you to install is going to be Lightweight Sidebar, this one. So it's another thing that you could do or install in your account and basically add sidebars into your website. And that's about it how to add link in WordPress page. So here, the first thing that you want to do is we want to go to a post first. Now here in our post, we want to choose post. So I have hello world here. Let's just click on it. And from here, what we want to do is we want to edit this one. So it's actually pretty simple to add your links here. So the only thing that you need to do here is you'll need to locate the add a link icon. So it's actually this one. So it's going to say link. So it has the circular broken at the center that has the dash on the very center there. So that's the link icon. So you just need to click on it and it's going to pop up a new UI here. So it's going to say search for or type URL here. So you could be dynamic for this one. You could either add your pages or uh, other websites as well here. So for example, we want to maybe add a Google here, just an example. So let's just type in google.com and it's going to say create pages, but sometimes it's not going to work properly, but sometimes it's going to properly navigate itself to google.com. But if that doesn't uh, navigate properly, make sure to go to google.com first and copy the link for that and just paste it here. So it's going to load properly. As you can see, it's going to load up as a link now. So just click on it. And once you, once you click on it, what you want to do is you want to edit this one. Because right now, it doesn't look really good. And we want to have that professional looking link. So to achieve that, we want to click on the link itself. Don't worry, it's going to open up the link on your web page or the edit page here. So it's just going to highlight that. And from here, the edit options will not be available to you. So if you want to edit it, just click on the edit button here. And here you can edit the text and the link as well. So what we want to change here is the text. So for example, we want to say click here to access Google. And here we also have the advanced. So if you want to have this interaction with every time they click on the link itself, it's going to open up in a new tab. So if you want to have that, just click on it and just click on save. Now here it's going to say click here to access Google. Now when we actually save this one, update it, and when we view this into a new tab, like I'll be showing you in a bit here, you'll be able to see the link that we just had here. So every time we hover over it, it's gonna remove the highlights. It means it's going, to, it's actually hovering over the link itself. So when we click on it, it should access Google in a new tab. And yeah. So if you want to use your pages here, it's basically really easy. So I'm just going to quickly show it to you. So we want to add a contact page. You just need to type in contact. It's going to say the page. It, it means that it is a page within your website. But if it's outside your website, it's going to say a link. So yeah, so that's how you add links in WordPress page. And that's about it. How to add YouTube video in WordPress website. So the first thing that you want to do here is you want to log in to, into your account first. So for us to actually add YouTube videos into our post, then we'll have to have access or administrative access on our post. So here you want to go to post here. And from here, you want to choose the post that you want to add a video for. So for example, we have this simple hello world post here and we want to add our video. So once you're in your post, the next thing that you want to do is you want to look for the video that you want to actually add here. So just an example, I'm going to remove this since I already added my video here. So on delete. Now here we want to add a YouTube video. So let's just go to our videos here and we want to access that specific video. 
Now in here, what we want to do is we want to basically right click on the video itself. And from there, we should be able to see the URL that we could embed our video. So let's just wait for this to load up and here, just right click on it. And from here, you want to click on the copy video URL. So there's the basic one here. So just click on the plus button that you see underneath your post here. Just click on it and you want to choose YouTube. So by default, YouTube will be available on the plus button, but I'll be showing you a few tricks. So you could actually use this one. So from here, you just need to paste your URL here and just click on embed and you'll be able to add that. So that's the basic way on you could, how you could actually add your YouTube videos, but we want to delete this one because I'll be showing you multiple ways how to do it. So you could either copy the video URL here, or you could copy it from here, or you could copy the video from a specific time. So for example, you're halfway through the video and you want to copy the video URL at the current time. So you want to copy that. Let's go back here. And when we add a new YouTube video, here, just paste this one and just click on embed. So every time we play this video, it's also going to play at that specific time. So let's just update this real quickly and open up into a new tab here. So just click on view post. And as you can see, when we play this one, you'll see it's going to start at the very center where we copied the link at that specific time. So this is the basic way on how you could actually start a video on a specific time, but we want to deep dive into it more for, or further have a look into it. So what you want to do is you want to scroll down a bit on your YouTube video itself and just want to click on share. Now from here, you have a few options, but we want to click on embed. Now from here, you'll have multiple options. You have the iframe here. We have the start at. So what we did before, this is going to be like a settings page. If, uh, if you're going to ask me where we could actually copy the video itself. So here, for example, let's enable this start at time. And we want to set this to a specific time. Like for example, you want to start this at the two minute mark. So we're just going to change this real quickly. So now next thing is. The only thing that you want to do here is just click on copy and it's automatically going to copy your uh, co your link here. So what you want to do is we want to delete this again, just an example. So here, since we copied that code, how do we actually paste this one? Because when we actually go ahead and choose YouTube again, it's not going to work. It's not going to embed. So how do you actually add this one? So there's a, the cool thing about this one is you could just basically double click next to the plus button or add block button here, it's automatically going to have this section that's for paragraphs. So what you need to do here now is just need to control V or just right click paste on it. And it's going to automatically load your video. So it's not gonna properly show here. But when we actually update this one, let's just click on update. And when we re reload this page here for our post, you'll see what I'm talking about. So here, let's just wait for this to load up properly. And here, as you can see, it now loads in my website. So when we, when we actually play this one, as you can see, it's going to start at the two minute mark and it's going to play from there on. And yeah, so that's the multiple ways on you, how you could actually embed your YouTube videos into your blogs here. But I'll be showing you other ways as well. So we'll just click on the plus or add block button here. And you want to click on browse all. So you can actually customize this one if you want to. So here, as you can see, sometimes blog will have the two section or two block section here. Where is the text here? And there's the video as well here. So I'll be showing you how to do that. So we want to scroll down a bit until we see the column section. Here, just click on it and we want to choose the two column. So let's just to choose this one. And from here, we want to add our paragraph. So we're just going to say test paragraph. And here we want to add our video. So let's choose YouTube here and we want to copy this one and basically embed it here. As you can see, it is how you add your text as well. You just need to use the column function to able to be able to do it. So let's just delete this one. But yeah, there's actually multiple ways on how you could embed your videos. So let's browse all here. You just need to type in video 
and you will have the uh, other options available here and we also have the formats or templates that we could use here like heading and video on the right three videos header with video background and yeah that's about it how to add categories in wordpress so the first thing to, that we want that we want to do here is we want to go to the section that says post so let's just search for post here at the left section and from here when we click on it the categories will appear here it's just we just want to click on it and from here what we want to do is we want to add a car, our category so as you can see i already have my categories here so it is sample category one and sample category two so we want to add a new category that says sample category three so let's just click on add new category and you have the category name here so just add, enter the sample category three here or the name that you want to add and if you want to add a description you could go ahead and do that and just click on add so it's gonna save it's gonna take some time so yeah so if you now want to use this category you could go ahead and do that but for this example what if you want to add subcategories for this one so just click on add category again and we want to create a new subcategory for category one so for example category 1.1 so here we want to add description that says this so what we want to do here is we want to disable the top level category option here so here we want to choose the parent category which is category one and just click on add so here what's going to do it's going to add a category as a subcategory and from there you could just basically start uh, doing or adding your categories so again let's start creating or adding our categories again so for example we want to add another subcategory category 1.1.1 and just click on test here and make sure to disable the top level category and you could choose the subcategory that we added the uh, a bit ago and just click on add and it's going to add that subcategory on that sub category and basically making this kind of tree section here and yeah so now since we created our categories how do we actually use this so you want to go to all posts and we want to go to the post that we want to add our category now here in our posts on the right section you should be able to see this section here so how do we add our categories so here at the right section you should be able to see category section and from here you could choose anything or any category that you want to use so for example we want to use 1.1.1 just so just choose that one so if you want to use other categories here let's just choose category 3 so it's going to appear in 1.1.1 and also in category 3 here just click on update so now we want to visit our website so let's just go to our website here real quickly so here just go to my home just click on visit side from here it's going to show our website so what we want to do is we want to go to this specific section here. So when we go to a section here, you should be able to see uh, the uh, section itself <laughs> or the uh, post itself. But how do we use the categories? First thing is we want to click on it. So if you have your categories added here, you should be able to use that. So let's just add, quickly add it that or add that into our menus real quickly. So let's just go to our page uh, section that says appearance and we want to go to menus and here we want to use or add our categories so let's as add our categories real quickly so let's go to categories here and let's just choose this one this one and yeah and add to menu and here so just an example, we want to also add the sample category two here as well. Just click on add to menu. So when we go to 1.1 and as well on three, you should be able to see the category that we just recently added. So let's just, I'm just gonna show you real quickly. So now let's go back into our site here. Let's just reload this one very quickly. And here make sure you save it first before going to the site so that your changes will appear so as you can see right now we are in a website as you can see there we have 1.1 1.1 1 .1. so here 
for example, we want to go to category 1. Here we could see the Hello World. Since this is the main category for our the category that we added, added to our Hello World poster, which is 1.1, it will simply appear in category 1 since 1.1.1 is under category 1. So next thing is we want to go to another one. So I just click on it and we will, when we go to category 2, we won't see anything because it's not under category 2. And if we go to 1.1, it's going to appear again since 1.1.1 is under 1.1. And we also have sample category 3, which is under the uh, category that we set for our post. And yeah, so basically when we click on 1.1.1, uh, it's going to appear as well. And yeah, so that's about it. How to zoom image in WordPress. So the first thing that you want to do here is you want to go to your dashboard and you want to go to plugins. Now here you want to go to add a new. And the next thing that you want to do is you want to search for the following plugin that I'll be showing you. So that plugin is going to be WP image zoom. Now here you just need to click on enter. And what you want to do is you want to install the WP Image Zoom here. Just click on install and wait for this to finish. But once it completes uh, installation, you just need to click on activate. And once it activates, we want to go to the WP Image Zoom section here. Now, what we want to do is we want to actually edit the settings for this one. So first, let's go to general settings. Now here, there's a lot of settings to play here. So we have the enable zoom in WooCommerce products. If you want to enable that, we also have the exchange the mail with main image on WooCommerce products. If you want to as well do that. So if you want to also enable the zoom on mobile devices, you can also enable this one. And as well, if you want to apply zoom on particular images, you could go ahead and go ahead and do that. But this is only for pro version. So if you have a pro for this specific feature, then you will have the, the settings available for you. So here, let's go to zoom settings now. So as you can see, this is the sample of what's going to look like. So it's going to be really zoomed in as you can see right now. So if you want to change this one, like for example, we want to have a square lens. So as you can see, when we zoom or go to the specific section, we'll have the square lens. Or if you have the circular lens, you can go ahead and use that. And we also have the null lens. So if we, uh, here, as you can see, when we go to a specific section, it's going to automatically zoom in into that section. But for example, we want to use this with zoom window so that we could really differentiate what we are actually zooming in. So as you can see, you could really see the details when we're actually zooming in, in here. So now next thing, since we got already got this one and want to use this with zoom with window, we want to change a few things here. Now, if you want to use a specific cursor for this one, like for example, we want to use the zoom cursor. So as you can see, when we go to that specific image section here, as you can see, there's the zoom cursor there. If you want to use a pointer, it's going to use a pointer, but let's just use the zoom icon here. So we also have the animation easing effect. So if we change this to five seconds, as you can see, there's a bit of difference there. So we also have the zoom level here, but unfortunately it is only available for the pro version of this specific plugin. So if you want to enable the pro version, go ahead and do that. So now next thing I want to do is we want to just uh, click on save changes. And once we save our changes, we are now ready to add this feature into our post or into your products. So let's just go to a post that we could actually change. For example, I have this post, this is a generic post that I automatically have here. So by default, I won't have the feature to actually zoom in into this image first. I have to change a bit or some things in here to make it enabled into my website. So here I have this image, it's really small at the moment, but yeah, the first thing is you want to click on the image itself and you'll have these styles at the right section. So what you want to do is you want to click on with zoom. And when we click on that, the next thing you want to do is you want to click on update and you want to click on the preview button here. So when we go ahead and go to preview, you should be able to see the changes that we just made. So when we go ahead and hover over it, as you can see, this is now the zoom effect that we are looking for. And yeah, and that's about it. How to link pages and WordPress. So the first thing that you want to do here is we want to go to our post. So in our post, we could actually add our links into our post. So just click on the post that you want to edit. Now in here, when we actually edit our post, like for example, for this one, you'll be able to see a array of icons that you could use. 
but we, what we are looking for is the link icon that you see here so it also has a shortcut that says Control k so you can press Control k on the keyboard if you want to so for now just click on the link icon and it's going to say search or type url so to add your page here is you just basically need to type in the name of your page so for example i have a page that's named contact as you can see here this is my page here so i just want to click on it it's going to be automatically loaded here but if you want to add a custom uh, link here you just need to like for example i'm gonna type in google.com here just click on google.com so if you want to edit this you could just click on the link itself and just click on edit and if you want to change the name so for example i'm just gonna include this as google just click on save now if you want to change the name of your link for your page here just basically click on it and just click on the edit icon here and basically change this if you want to so now you also have the advanced option here that says open a new tab so every time you click on the link here that says contact it's going to open up a new page here so if you don't allow this it's going to open up at the same tab but if we allow this it's going to open up into a new tab so just click on save and we will try the open a new tab option here so once you're done just click on update and let's see how this looks like on our website so here we are now in the uh, post here so when we actually click on contact it's going to open up a new tab like what we said before and when we go and click on the other link it's going to open up google.com how to add other name in wordpress post so usually when we post something on our wordpress website we can see the author name here as you can see in my post right now so how do we hide it so we have actually two ways to do this so the first way for us to actually remove the other name is via the C additional css so we could access this via the appearances and we want to go to customize now under customize you should see the additional css here and what you want to do is you want to paste the following following codes here which is entry meta display non important and entry meta dot posted display none then as you can see right now when i posted or when i paste my code here the date and the author name will be removed as you see i'm going to return this one and from here it's removed so the next thing that you want to do is you want to publish this one and your changes will be saved so let's go to our website here and we actually wrote, reload this one and as you can see the name has been removed from my website now next thing that i want to do like for example i want to remove this via a plugin so you have to install the following plugin that i'll be showing you so let's just go back into our dashboard and from here you want to go to your plugins and into your plugins you want to add a new one now in the new plugin we want to search for wp meta and the remover now here go ahead and search for that and as you can see, make, make sure that you actually spell this correctly hit on enter and as you can see you will be able to see the wp meta the end date remover here just click on install now and once you've done that let's go ahead and go to our plugins now here we want to go to our meta wp meta uh, end date remover here just click on activate the next thing you want to do is you want to allow and continue then from here you will be set into our settings so in our settings we should be able to see wp meta and date remover so we just want to go to our primary settings and what we want to do is we want to enable the settings that we want to uh, include here so we want to the your dates and other metadata will be hidden from a page once you enable this and click on yes and just click on save changes and as you can see right now the author name is now hidden from my post on my wordpress website and that's about it how to add javascript and wordpress so by default when we actually develop something on wordpress it, the features itself is actually quite limited so we have to add our plugins and able to, to in, in, for able to us to use other features here so if you want to add your javascript then we'll have to install a plugin for this one so the first thing you want to do is you want to go to your dashboard and in your dashboard you want to go to your plugins now in the plugin section you want to click on add new 
and from here you want to go to the following plugin that I'll be showing you. The plugin it's gonna be insert headers and footers and hit on enter and it's going to load up a plugin here if we type this correctly so here we want to install this one just click on install and wait for this to install properly so here once install just click on activate and once it activates we want to go to the following so we want to go to our settings and from here we want to look for the section that says wp headers and footers now from here we want to paste our javascript so as an example i'm going to paste this a very simple code here uh, in the header so here so it's gonna be a script tag and inside the script tag is some alert uh, happening at the very center so we want to say for example hello and from here you what you want to do is you want to start clicking on the save changes button here so once you've done that, any page that we reload will actually execute this specific script here. So if you don't know how to visit your website yet, so you want to click on the very top where is the name of your website and you want to click on visit site. So I want to open up in this new tab here. And as you can see, when I reload or when I load my website, it's going to say hello because that's the script that I just inserted into my website here. As you can see, when I reload this one, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to say hello, and I just need to click on OK to complete that, and that's about it. So it's pretty easy. You just need to install that specific plugin, and you'll be able to do this on your website, and that's about it. How to write blog in WordPress. So first thing we could we should consider in creating our blog here is the team that we are currently using. So if we make our teams, make sure that you actually make it in a way that your team is using a blog type of theme. So let's go to t appearance here and go to teams. And we want to go to blog here. And here you want to choose the appropriate one that you, be, you could use for your site. So we're just gonna choose something that we could use an example. So maybe we could use uh, maybe this one. Just click on activate design. Just then and activate. Now here, let's go back into our dashboard. So now if you want to view your website directly, like what you see right now on my screen is you want to go to my home and under my home, you want to go to the visit site button here. So it's going to load up your website if you want to have a live review for it. So now the next thing you want to do is you want to add to start adding your post. So go to post here. And here you see the hello world, but just the default posts for your WordPress account. But you could basically just delete this if you want to. Just click on three dot icon here and click on trash if you want to delete that. But yeah, let's go ahead and add a new post. Now, as you can see, there's gonna be a very simple one. It's actually pretty boring to look at right now because it's pretty uh, basic at the moment but we'll be i'll be showing you how you could actually add or how to customize this one so for example let's add a title so how to title and here we want to add our blocks so i have this text here this is an example of the text so we want to add a section here just add it here and paste it this one now this is the first section so if you click on the bottom of this section here it's gonna it, pop up a plus or add block button here. So if you want to add another line of text is you could just basically just copy this one. And from here, you could just basically start typing if you want to, or you could just start uh, start pasting your content. Let's just paste this one. So now how do we actually customize this one? Like for example, we want to make it a lot bigger or even make it a heading or whatnot. You could basically just highlight this one. And from here, you could just click on the paragraph setting here and choose heading and yeah it's going to change it into a heading if you want to he also have the change level here if you want a tree h6 if you want to h1 is the largest but we're just going to change h3 and yeah so we also have the align here so if you want this one or even this one or this one on so yeah so another few things that you could do here for fun is you could actually just add a block, another block here. 
So if you want to add paragraph or a heading, just like what we did, you could choose these two here, or you could just basically start typing if you want to. But if you want to delete this one or basically add this one here again, maybe you could just choose a column group or image. So for example, we want to add an image here. So what we want to do, click on image and click on upload image and you could choose the images that you have right now on your PC. So let's just choose this one, click on open and it's going to add that image here. So let's just wait for this to load up and upload property. And you see we've added this section or image here. Now, how do we add multiple images or multiple sections? Like, like for example, three columns on this part. So you just need to click on the plus button again and you want to click on columns. Now here you should choose or how many columns you want to add. So for example, we want to add three columns. Now in here, like what we did here, we are going to now add our sections. So if, you, for example, you want to add a text here, you could choose paragraph and just paste your text. So for example, I'm just going to copy this first part here. I'm going to paste it here on the section here. And the next thing I want to do is I want to add my image. So let's just click on image and I want to actually upload it. So I want to add this PNG image I have right now. Just click on open. And here, I want to, for example, I want to add another thing that is not here. So let's just click on browse all. And you'll be able to see the other things that you could add here, which is quite fun if you want, if you imagine. So here, uh, we also have this section that says audio cover file even. We also have the stock. If you want spacer, you could also add that. You also have the custom HTML if you want to, and navigation, site logo, and whatnot. And yeah, if you also have the embedded here, we have Twitter, YouTube. So if you want to add YouTube, go ahead. And for example, we want to add YouTube here. And we want to embed our YouTube video here. So for example, we want to add this video here. Let's go embed. And that's going to add that video there. So, yeah. so if you want to delete this one, you can just basically just click on, make sure you hover it, click on it first, click on it, and just click on delete. And here. So, yeah, so if you want to edit this one, so if you want to combine here, here. So, yeah, so if you want to add other parts here, so for example, we want to add another image, you could go ahead and do that. But, yeah. So yeah, so as long as you know how to block things here, it's the uh, possibilities are unlimited. So let's just try adding a new one here. Click on browse all. So if you want to add a verse, you could go ahead and do that. We have the markdown writing prompt if you want to. And here. So they also have the section that says forms and uh, earn here, but these are actually premium services. So if you want to use this one, you'll need to have the premium for WordPress. But don't worry, there's actually a lot of free subs here that you could use. So it's not actually necessary. But if this sections are necessary for you, then I would suggest for you to actually use the premium or buy the premium for WordPress. So yeah, so basically the possibilities of you editing or creating your blog here, you just need to be creative about it is actually unlimited you have the tools here just basically just click on the plus button and you'll be able to use a lot of things here maybe you could actually visit different vlogs and copy on how 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 they styled the website but don't copy it entirely just get inspiration uh, inspiration from it and yeah how to create blog page in WordPress with Elementor. So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to access our WordPress website. And from here, we need to install a few things just to make sure that we have the appropriate tools to actually create our blog page. Now in this case, what we need to do is we first need to go to our plugins, go to the add new plugin option. And from here, what we need to do is we first need to search for Elementor. In this case, go to the search plugin at the top right, click or enter the following, which is Elementor and press on enter. Now in this case, look for Elementor here, click on install now and click on activate to activate Elementor. Now it's going to ask you to create your account. So it's actually pretty easy. You could use your already existing account like Google for you to create your account and just fill out some details for you to uh, actually fill out. Now once you've done that, you should be able to start using Elementor. 
but we'll be using an additional tool tool or plugin for this tutorial so in this case what we need to do is we need to search again the following which is going to be the post grid app let's go ahead and search for it and from here what we need to do is we need to install it so let's go ahead and click on install now and from here what we need to do next is we need to activate it so let's go ahead and click on activate once you've activated this uh, plugin, we are now ready to start editing whatever. For example, we have the following the post grid option. So in this case, you have these settings for it. Like for example, if you want to enable preloader, load scripts dependent on block, icon type, disable font, awesome script if you want to. Now, you also have the pagination range here, which is uh, by default four. Also have the pop up field section if you want to add. Like, the, for example, the title, content, feature images, post date, other uh, category, tags, and social share. The social share section, the custom scripts if you want to add them, chat GPT if you want to use chat GPT, and other settings that you can actually use. Now, in this case, uh, we are going to retain uh, it as, uh, as is, and we want to now go to Elementor. So let's go ahead and click on the Elementor option at the left panel here, and you should be able to see your general options here, like, for example, posts and pages that you could actually create create with Elementor so make sure that the post option is actually actually enabled we also have integrations if you want to add Google Maps embedded API advanced options here and features that if you want to use them now you also have the other options here like role manager element manager here other tools that you could use now you could go ahead and start editing whatever here like for example accordion alert archives audio if you want to but uh the default settings here and in, in elementor is actually enough for you to start building your blog page in this case what we need to do is we need to click on the new button at the top uh, section of your screen and you should be able to see the following which is post media page in this case we want to click on post for us to actually create our blog page now in this case what we need to do is we need to click on the edit with elementor option that you see at the top section of your screen because right now this is just the default uh, editor for uh, wordpress now in this case once you click on edit with elementor it would change your current ui to that of elementor now we all know that having Elementor on your uh, website is actually really, really helpful because you'll be able to uh, basically edit your uh, post here a lot more. Now in this case, since we actually added the post grid uh, uh, extension here or the uh, app, you could basically use one of the following grids here. Like for example, the list uh, layout, TPG section height, grid layout, uh, grid hover layout and slider layout as well now in this case uh you could go ahead and start editing here like for example i want to use uh, maybe i want to see use this one so in this case once you click on it you have the following options so you have the layout first layout second layout and third layout so maybe i want to use the first layout here and just basically uh use it now in this case go ahead and click on it it should apply that now in this case if you want to drag a specific widget in here you could go ahead and do that as well so so yeah, so in this case, I'm going to use the first layout here and we are now good. So let's just go back here real quickly and click on the empty space here. And you can just basically start editing your blog page. In this case, we have heading, images, text editor, video, button, divider, and spacers here that you could use. So typically, there's going to be a lot that you could use here on Elementor. So I would suggest you, since there are going to be a lot of things that you could actually use in Elementor, I would suggest you to first uh, uh, basically explore what are the tools that you could use here. So by the way, since we added the uh, other feature or the other plugin besides Elementor, there's going to be a lot of uh, pro versions here. So in this case, we have General here, which is the uh, following advanced type of elements. But yeah, so the most common ones here are going to be heading images and text editor so for example i want to add a text editor here what you need to do is you just need to drag it into section here and you'll be able to add your text now in your text uh, uh depending on the element actually depending on the element that you select, uh, selected right now the options that you see at the left side here would actually change like for example since this is a text you should be able to have options here to change your text uh, make it bigger change it to, uh, to a different format like for example make it a heading if you want to or you just make it a pre-formatted or even a heading six here or just a simple paragraph here also have the option make it bold if you want to or you could go ahead and get go to choose the text or visual options here so yeah depending on what you want so you also have the option to edit or insert links on specific words here if you want to 
And yeah, so I also have these styles here, which it gives you the option to uh, change the alignment, the text color for it, the typography, and the text it, uh, text shadow itself. Also have the advanced option here as well. Now, if you want to add a further, like for example, further views or further design in it, like for example, when I click on this one, so let's go ahead and click on anywhere here and go back here very quickly. And from here, maybe I want to say, I want to, uh, basically edit it so for example let's just go back here very quickly and from here instead of just adding like a uh, text here you can actually use grids which is a great way for you to organize your text or your uh, current uh, look of your website so maybe I want to put it at the top section here make uh, and this one I want to insert it in the first grid here so let's go ahead and uh, do that. But if you aren't able to do that, you can just remove this one and uh, insert another text. So in this case, let's go ahead and go back here. And from here, we go, go, go ahead and select on this section here for us to actually add this one. To click on the plus button here. And from here, you could go ahead and just add, like for example, images, if you want to add images. And you can just basically choose image here. From here, let's go ahead and choose this one. Click on select to upload that. And if you want to add a different one here as well, for example, I want to add now a, maybe I want to add a button here. So in this case, this is now a button. Now you could go ahead and edit your button here. Again, like what I said before, the options or the designs that you'll be able to see here changes depending on what you uh, currently are trying to edit. Since for example, this is going to be button, the options for you to, do, to update it is going to be different. So maybe I want to say it is going to be 50 uh, padding here or make it a lot bigger, even the border radius here. And yeah, so you also have the advanced here. So maybe I want to add uh, some layout options here. The first one, 50. Or even make it 100 just to make it a lot more in the center. But uh, yeah. So in this case, uh, if you want to change the number of columns that so you have here on your container, you just go back in here. And from here, you go and just select your container here. And right click on your grid here click on edit grid and from here just scroll down a bit here have the option to change the rows for it so let's just make it one row and from here we'll just make it two uh, columns as you can see it now just contains an image and even a uh, section here for a button but uh, yeah so the most important thing here is you have a section title here which is the most important part in your blog post and yeah if you want to edit this further you could go and just click on the section right or right click on it click on edit tpg grid editor and you should be able to change the layout for it if you want to go to settings like uh if you want to uh show or hide the post order if you want to go to styles if you want to add margins or border radius or even the advanced section here which gives you the option to edit the z index css classes and a lot more how to copy wordpress page so the first thing that you want to do here is you first want to go to wordpress.com and basically log in into your account. So once you've done that, we actually have two ways to copy our pages here. So I'll be showing you two ways to do this. But before we start, we would like to ask you to please consider on liking and subscribing to our channel. This will help us a lot. So to continue, the first thing that we want to do for our first method is we want to go to the pages section at the left panel of your screen. Now in here, you want to click on the three dotted icon next to the page that you want to copy. And from here, you want to click on copy page. Now, once you've done that, the next thing that you want to do is you want to start customizing this. So just to give you an idea, I'm going to add a copy at the very uh, start of that header and from here I want to save my draft then the next thing that I want to do is I want to publish this just publish it and from here I just I could just basically go back into my Word WordPress homepage there and I'll be able to check my page so let's just go back real quickly and as you can see right now i already have my copy about page so it is now a separate page where you could actually make your changes if you want to so if you want to delete your page here just click on the three dotted icon that you see at the right section of your screen here and from here just click on trash and you will be able to delete your copied page now, this is the first method, but how do you actually do this? The second method, which is through a plugin. So this plugin is actually really helpful. It's going to speed up a lot of things on your WordPress development here. So go to plugins here. And from here, you want to look for duplicate 
page just hit on enter and you'll be able to see this duplicate page section so just click on it then from here you need to click on upgrade and activate if you don't have the premium plan yet so just click on the upgrade here and from there you'll be able to install plugins so right now the plugin features on WordPress is actually a premium feature. So yeah, for you to add this duplicate page, go ahead and just upgrade to premium and install the duplicate page. Now, if we install the duplicate page here, you will be able to actually use it in your pages here. So once we go to pages here, you'll notice that there's significant changes here. Like so for example, if you hover over your page here, you'll be able to see shortcuts for copy, delete, and a lot of the other stops and a lot of things that you could do from here how to convert Wix website to WordPress. So what we need to do first here is we first have to access the two websites or the two platforms that we have. So currently I have my Wix website open up here. So in this case, go ahead and go to Wix.com, open up your website here and basically go to the editor for your website here because we'll be needing a link from our website. Now, next thing you want to do is you want to also open up your WordPress account here. And from here, what we need to do is we need to access a specific setting. So by default, you should be rejected to the My Homepage here. And at the very bottom, you should be able to see different settings here. So we have the tools and settings here. So go ahead and click on tools. Now under tools, you need to click on import. And as you can see, you have the option to basically import content from different sources. Now, just to give you some information, while both Wix and WordPress are both platforms for building your website, the processes and the actual setup for those uh, platforms are actually quite different. So meaning a complete or an actual move or basically a uh, move of your website here. So for example, if you want ex an exact replica of your website from Wix to your WordPress here, and uh, I would actually just say that it is not possible so currently with how wix and uh, wordpress is actually set up an actual a uh, look or an actual actual replica will not be possible but the great thing about these two tools here is they still provide a way for you to import or transfer your content and some certain aspects on it now in this case you should be able to transfer like posts or different uh settings or different things from your website here now, what we need to do here to get started is we need to choose the option here that says Wix. So once you click on it, it's going to ask you for the URL for your Wix site. So in this case, go back into Wix here. So make sure that you're in the editor. And from here, under publish, you should be able to see the view site section here. And from here, just copy your website. And from here, what we need to do is go back into our WordPress here. Just paste the following. And from here, click on continue. Now from here on, what we need to do is just wait for it to actually load up. But if it actually requires you uh, further details on it, like for example, is this your site? So it's going to give you the actual uh, link on it and it's going to uh, basically give you a, a quick look on your specific web page here. So another thing that you should consider here is you need to basically make sure that your website is actually published. Now, meaning if your site is not published yet, it might have or uh, basically give you some uh, errors on the website itself. So meaning make sure that it's actually published first. Once it's published, uh, you should not have any problems. Now, in this case, once you've confirmed your site here, you can go ahead and click on yes, start import. And it's going to start importing your posts, your pages and any media. So that includes videos and photos that you have from your Wix website. Now, in this case, so this is how you actually import your data from your Wix website into your WordPress. So again, it while it's not possible for us to directly create a replica of our Wix website into WordPress, but it's still possible for us to import or transfer our details. So that includes pages, posts, media, and other details from our Wix website into our WordPress website how to place ads on the WordPress website. So when we're actually choosing or building our website here, the first thing that we want to do is we want to set up our teams. 
but once we set up our teams if you're looking for the ad section so when you go to appearance here you won't be able to see the ad section even if you go to your account settings here there are no ad section or settings that you could work around here but there is actually plugins available on wordpress where you could actually use it to add ads into your website so first thing that you want to do is you want to go to the plugin section here and what you want to type in is the following which is just ads basically ads so from here it's going to show you different kinds of uh plugins that you could use to add ads into your website so i would suggest you to use the ad inserter here which is a free tool that you could use for this one so we we'll just click on it and from here you just need to click on upgrade and activate so for in order for you to use ads or to add ads into your website is you have to have a business plan enabled into your account to use the plugins so here just click on upgrade and activate it's going to show you how much the monthly fee is and yeah so just uh, go ahead and activate your business plan here and you'll be able to use your plugins so here just install this one but yeah one of the other plugins that you could basically use this one is the google listings and ads so it is directly from woocommerce which is uh, one of the uh trusted entities in wordpress so you could go ahead and install this one and another thing or plugin that you could also use is the advanced ad section which is the ad manager and adsense so this actually supports google sense auto ads if you want to use that and yeah a lot of other stuff here like also amazon like you customize image banners and you could also have a, a page filter for this one so yeah just make sure you upgrade upgrade your account into a business one and get your plans now on wordpress and that's about it how to use google side kit in wordpress now in this case, you might be wondering how do you actually start using Google Site Kit in your WordPress website. As you can see, this is the official website for the uh, Site Kit for uh, Google, which in this case, SiteKit.withGoogle.com. Now you should be able to see different information about this one as well as the documentations, news, and some integrations if you want to view them. Now in this case, how do we actually integrate it into our WordPress website? Well, it's actually pretty easy. So what we need to do first is we need to actually visit our plugin so at the plugins here go ahead and hover over it and click on the add new plugin option now from here go to the search plugins at the top right here type in side kit and press on enter now you should be able to see different side kit here but we'll be using the side kit by google make sure the publisher is going to be google let's go and click on install now and from here let's go ahead and click on activate in this case let's just wait for it to activate itself and as you can see right now, Scikit is now active. Now what we need to do next is we now need to set it up. Now to set this up, go ahead and click on Start Setup. And from here, it will redirect you to Google Scikit. Now from here, what we need to do is we need to sign in with Google. Now in this case, let's go ahead and click on Sign In with Google here. And from here, you also have the option to actually connect your analytics here. So just to view uh, some of the network traffic that is going into your website, it is a great thing for you to actually enable this one. So just to view what is currently happening or just have analytics. In this case, go and click on sign in again. And from here, we need to choose our account. So in this case, I'm going to choose my account here. And from here, let's go and click on continue. Now, it's also going to ask you some permissions regarding your account. So that includes see and download your Google Analytics data, view your Google Tag Manager container, many of you and manage your search console and manage the list of sites and domain you control. But in this case, we are going to enable all of this one. And from here, let's go and click on continue. Now, it's going to give you some steps for you to actually verify your ownership just to make sure that you're really the owner of that website. In this case, you can go ahead and just click on verify here to proceed with the next step here. And also, it's going to ask you to turn on metrics on your dashboard. So to show metrics on your SiteKit dashboard, you need to allow the following website to access your Google account data. So let's go ahead and click on allow. And from here, we need to turn on the or set up the search console as well. In this case, you can just click on set up now or set up. And it should redirect you to the next page, which in this case, setting up Google Analytics. In this case, let's go ahead and click on Next. 
Now on the next page, it's going to redirect you back into your WordPress website. And now it's going to ask you to please select the account information below. Now in this, in this case, you need to select your account. So previously, I already have a bunch of accounts that I'm using for analytics. But to keep things a lot separate here, we'll be setting up a new account. So let's go and click on set up a new account here. And you need to uh, basically indicate the account now in this case, we want to indicate it as is on a website here and we want to add a property and web data stream as well. In this case, you need to choose your country, time zone, but all of this data will be populated automatically. In this case, let's go and click on create account. Now from here, what we need to do next is we need to wait for it and basically choose our account here. Let's go ahead and click on continue to finish setting up. And let's go ahead and click on continue. But also, if you want to view their terms of service, privacy policies, you can go and click on the appropriate links here. But in this case, I'm going to click on continue to allow SiteKit to be able to edit Google, Google Analytics management entities. In this case, once you've done that, you should be able to have your own account for this specific website. So let's just wait for it to load up. Now, it's also, also going to redirect you to the analytics terms of service agreement. Now, there's going to be a lot of information that you could view here. So make sure that you read all through it first. But in this case, we are going to uh, go to the very bottom here. And from here, we want to uh, go ahead and accept it. In this case, let's go and click on the checkbox next to it. And from here, let's go and click on I accept. Again, make sure to read their terms of service here. In this case, as you can see, your analytics account was successfully created. Let's go ahead and go to go to my dashboard. Now from here, it should redirect you back into your uh, WordPress website. And as you can see right now, we have a different information that we can now access on our website. Now, for example, in the traffic section, you have the find out how your audience is growing. So in this case, it's going to first gather, start gathering data. So you have your visitors here, as well as the search traffic over the last 28 days and the impressions, total clicks, unique visitors from search. Now it's going to give you a lot of information on how your website is doing. Now you also have to see how your content is doing. So it's going to start gathering data. So obviously since our account is fairly new, you won't see much in here, but in this case, it's going to start gathering data in here. Now in this case, if you want to click on content at the top section here, it's still going to redirect you to content. If you go to speed here, it's, it will redirect you to speed, which in this case, you'll be able to uh, basically keep track on how fast your pages are and get specific recommendations and what to improve here. So we also have the monetization here, which is a great way for you to uh, basically earn more money from your website. So we have the capabilities of actually adding AdSense into our website here. Now, if you're not familiar, AdSense is a great way for you to earn money because in this case, uh, you'll be able to actually just focus on creating content for a website, improving your content. And AdSense would actually do the heavy lifting for you, for you to earn money from your, web, from your website. So they will be giving uh, related ads on your website here. And you need to do a bunch of things, uh, things here for you to set it up. So if you really want to use it, you can go and click on connect now. And just follow the steps for you to actually connect your uh, AdSense or create your AdSense account for you to start earning on your website itself. But for analytics and seeing your traffic for your uh, website here, Scikit, uh, this is how you actually set it up. In this case, that's about it. How to speed up WordPress website. If you're having issues or a, or having slow load time on your website, that could actually have drastic effects on your website. Basically, you can even lose money from potential customers if your site loads too slow. So there's actually a few ways for us to remedy this. So the first thing I would suggest you to first do is to check if your website is actually loading slow. So this is actually a free website you could visit, which is isitwp.com. So you could just basically go to this website here and just enter your URL and analyze your website. So this tool is going to give you the load time, performance grade, and page size and requests here. So you basically, basically analyze your website here if it's performing at optimal uh, time or if it the load, load time is actually okay. And yeah, once you've guaranteed your website is actually loading poorly, then we could go to our steps here. Now, one of the ways you could do it to or to optimize your website is you want to compress your images. 
images that aren't optimized for the web can slow down your site's load time. You might want to compress your images file size. So basically, you want to make sure that your your images are compressed, not the quality itself, but rather the file size itself. Because having good quality images on your website is really good, but we just want to optimize or basically compress the size itself, not the quality. Now, one of the ways or one of the ways that we could also do this is we want to check your plugins. Bad plugins can slow down your website. Make sure you only use the necessary plugins for your website. Having multiple plugins on your website will not help you. So consider reducing your plugins. So you can see your plugins here. Go to plugins and you'll be able to see all of your plugins. So yeah, make sure that you use your plugins in your website and it you will notice a significant amount of speed returning back into your website. Now, another thing that you could do for your website is you want to check your external scripts. Limit your usage of the scripts and make sure you use only what you need as having too many scripts can slow down your site. So like what we did on plugins, make sure that you only use the things that you only need for your website. Now, the last thing that we could do here is we want to consider on installing a cache plugin into your website. If you start having a significant amount of site visitors, your server will have problems loading the site over and over again. That's why having a cache plugin will make things easier for your site. So here we want to go to plugins and you just want to type in cache and you'll be able to see different um, cache plugins that you could use. So I would suggest you to use the WP Optimize Cache Clean Compress here and you will notice a significant amount of speed returning back into your website. Just click on it. So here for you to use this one, you have to have a business plan if you're using WordPress.com. So yeah, go ahead and upgrade your plan and install this uh, plugin into your website and you'll notice a significant amount of speed for your website and that's about it. How to reset WordPress theme. So most of the time, you will be able to do this via the plugin section. So let's go to plugins here and we want to basically search for WP reset. WP reset. So here. So if you're using WordPress.com, the WP Reset will not be available to you. But you could basically try using the WP WH uh, plugin here and maybe try it. But personally, I haven't tried this. But for us, uh, for this to work, I would suggest you to install the plugin into your WordPress here. So to do that, you need to go to the top section of your plugins here and you need to click on upload. And by the way, you will need the business plan for this to work. So once you click on upload, you'll be able to upload your plugin here. So where do we get the WP reset if it's not available here in the plugin section? So it is the website here. It's wordpress.org slash plugins WP dash reset. And from here, you can just basically click on download and it's going to download that zip file. So what you need to do here is you just want to upload that zip file in this section where you could upload your plugins and from there you'll be able to use WP Reset. Now if you want to install this manually then you have to download the stable version on this link here which is downloads.wordpress.org slash plugin slash WP Reset latest stable that zip. So here, you just need to unzip it and upload to the WP content slash plugins folder and then open WordPress admin and plugins and click activate next to the WP reset. And from there, open plugins admin page located under the tools menu. You have to generate sitemap and WordPress. So sitemap is a file that stores information about your pages and how they relate to one another. So usually it's in XML, which is kind of similar to HTML, but different. But generally having a sitemap is good for you. So when we hover over the places that we could edit our website, so either we go to settings or in tools or in users, we won't be able to have or create our own sitemap. So we'll have to use a plugin for this one. So don't worry, it's actually pretty easy. You just need to go to plugins and you need to type in the following. So we'll be searching for 
Yoast SEO. So as you can see here, we have the Massa Premium. So we are actually searching for the free one here. So just search for Yoast SEO and just click on search. Now once you've done that, you want to go ahead and open this one and you want to install this into your website. But in, for, in order for you to install this, you'll have to have the premium or business plan for WordPress.com. So once you've got that, just go ahead and install this one. And from there, you just need to go to the plugin and enable the sitemap option onto the plugin itself. And that's about it. How to get free hosting and domain for WordPress. So the first thing that you want to do here is you want to go to the following website that I'll be showing you, which is Pantheon.io. So once you've gone to that website, the next thing that you want to do is you want to look for the get started button, which is located at the top right of your screen. Now in here, we'll be prompt to sign up into their website. So we'll be signing up to get our free site or free hosting for Pantheon. Now here you need to enter your first name, last name, company name, work email, and enter your password. So your password should be at least in this criteria. So it should be a minimum of eight characters, number should be present, special characters in uppercase, and 16 characters and more, and has a lower case. You also have to choose the country where you are currently at, and you have to agree to Pantheon's terms of use. And from there, you just need to click on sign up. But if you want to skip all of this information or fill up process, then the sign in option for Google is actually present here. So if you already have a Google account and you want to link your Pantheon account with your Google account, the only thing that you want to do here is you just need to click on sign in with Google, which is really, really awesome. But if you want to sign up individually, then you can go ahead and do that as well. Now here, I'm just going to choose my account that I want to create with my Pantheon account. And from here, the next thing that I want to do is I need to enter some of the details to finish my registration. So here, I need to enter my first name, my last name, and my country. And it's going to ask me, uh, am I an agency? Now here, just click on continue. Now, the next thing that we want to do here is we want to create our new site. So just click on create a site. And from here, we want to choose WordPress. Now here, it's going to actually create our website here. But the next thing that we want to do here is the next thing is we want to enter our site name. So let's just say enter Tony's. And from here, we want to choose the region for the site. So for this example, we're just going to choose Australia and just click on continue. So once you've done that, it's going to deploy our web WordPress website. So it's going to take a few minutes. So let's wait for this to finish. Now, once it completes, the next thing that you want to do is you want to click on visit your Pantheon site dashboard. Now here, if you want to take a quick tour, go ahead and do that. But for now, we're just going to click on no thanks. Now in here, we have three tabs that we should be looking at. So we have the dev tab here where we make more most of the development on this tab. So we also have the test where we can actually test our changes. So if it works on test, it's going to also work on live. And we also have the live tab, which is the current status of our website that is currently live. So live from the word itself. So here, let's go back into dev and we want to actually make a few changes on our website. So let's just go ahead and visit development side. It's going to load up a new tab here and we want to choose English for our WordPress site. So just click on continue. And from here, we want to add our site title, our username and our password. We also have our email here and as well the search engine visibility. So we'll be filling all this up real quickly. So let's just start. So we've successfully just filled up these details here. So one of the important thing that you need to do here is you want to enable the search engine visibility that says discourage search engines from indexing the site. But once you filled up all of the details, you need you just need to click on install WordPress and it's going to start the installation process. And here it's going to ask us to log in. So just start logging in enter our username and password and we've just successfully logged in into our wordpress website and yeah we've just successfully installed wordpress and we got free hosting from pantheon.io and that's about it
how to back up my WordPress website. So there's actually multiple reasons why you might want to actually back up your website. So sometimes updates can go wrong and actually having a backup of your website would be really helpful in the future. So something in case or something went wrong with the update process, then having a backup of your website can be really helpful if you want to have this state before the update is actually applied then your backup will be really helpful since you'll be getting your website again in case something went wrong in the update process. Now, another reason why you might want to back up your website is you might get hacked in the unforeseenable future. So we can't say by or guarantee that we won't get hacked on our website. So having a backup of your website would be really helpful. So if in case someone hacks you, then you have a backup of your website. Another reason to back up your website is you can have you you might have missed a payment on your server or 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 in your subscription. Then having a backup copy of your website, then you will be able to readily use it anytime in another server or in another provider. Now, lastly, something sometimes something things happen into your website and sometimes it's gonna randomly crash if something went wrong and you can't identify the reason then yeah basically having a backup of your website is really good so when we go to our settings here so settings or either in tools we won't be able to see any tools that we can actually use to back up our website so either you go to tools here you won't be able to see that so for us to properly back up our website is we want to go to plugins. Now in the plugin section, you should be able to search the plugin that's called, it's going to be Updraft Plus WordPress Backup Plugin. So what you want to do here, just you want to click on that. And from here, you just want to install this. So it is actually a pretty easy tool to use. You just need to follow the screen, the appropriate UI here, and you'll be able to easily back up your website. But for in order for you to use this, so if you're using WordPress.com, you'll have to have the business version of WordPress. So you have the you have to have the business plan for this one to install your plugins here. And yeah, it's pretty easy and it's really important that you have a backup of your website and that's about it. How to remove malware from WordPress site. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to go to wordpress.com and log in into your account. So once you've done that, the next thing that we want to do is we want to open up a new tab and you want to type in the following website. So it's going to be called wildcare.com. So what you need to do here is you want to sign up. So Malcare application or the Malcare website here is going to be a plugin that we could use on WordPress to scan for viruses. So it's actually pretty easy to use. So I'm just going to log out from my account here. So when you actually sign up into Malcare, you will be able to see your email address, password or confirmation password here to sign up. But you also have the option to log in via your Google account that you could use. So you can just choose the, your Google account there. So once you click on it, you'll be able to choose which Google account you want to use for this one. So since I already created my account, it's going to automatically log me in. Now here, how do you actually add your site here? Just click on add site and you just need to enter the URL for your WordPress site here. And basically it's going to lead you into this UI here. So now what you need to do is you want to install the plugin here. So you could either install the plugin via the Malcare website here or via the uh, web uh, plugin options here in WordPress. So if you want to use the plugins via the uh, section for WordPress here, so for example, let's just type in Malcare. So you can just click on search and just click on this one. And here you just need to install this into your account. So, but do be informed, uh, plugin or the plugin usage for WordPress is actually not a free feature. So you will have to upgrade your plan to have this installed into your website. But yeah, so yeah, from here you just need to install that. And from here you will have the different options to get your site scanned and get protected. 
But yeah, but once you've installed everything, you just need to click on the scan side that you see on your screen here, and that will be about it. How to fix 404 error in a WordPress website. 404 error in your web WordPress website isn't actually unique to WordPress itself. So this error can be encountered on any website that we have on the internet. So there's actually multiple ways on how we could actually resolve this one. So the first way that we could resolve this one is we want to check if we mistype the URL itself. So make sure that you have the correct URL and you're correctly accessing your website. So if you mistype your URL, then you might have the 404 error up here on your screen here. Now, one more thing that we could do to fix this issue is we want to check if there are any caching issues on our web browser. So if you're having any any caching issues on your web browser, then the only thing that we will need to do here is basically clear our cache. So to do that, we want to go to the top right of the screen, that's the G dotted icon, and you want to go to settings. Now under settings, you want to go to privacy and security. Here you want to click on clear browsing hit data. And from here, you want to click on the last hour. So if it's still working in the last hour, if you want to delete your data for the whole day or the several last days where it's still working, you could go ahead and do that. Now from here, if you want to also delete your browsing history, you could go ahead and do that and also delete your cookies and other side data. But the important thing here is we want to delete our cache images and files. So you could just retain this one and remove this one. But if you also want to delete this too, you could go ahead and do that and just click on clear data. And yeah, so the next thing that we could do here is we could actually uh, wait for our website to work properly. So sometimes there are issues on the DNS. This especially prominent on websites that are, are, are recently registered on a DNS. So you might want to basically wait for the problem to resolve itself. And once it resolves itself, you'll be able to access your website. And that's about it. How to know if a website is made with WordPress. So there's actually multiple ways for you to know if a website is actually made with WordPress. So the easiest way to know if a website is actually made in WordPress is when we actually scroll down a bit, you'll be able to see the section that says powered by WordPress. So if the website is fairly new or the actual user or the owner of the website is actually not a uh, full-time developer then they won't have time to actually edit or remove the powered by wordpress section here but for example if you're visiting a professional website and they have the powered by wordpress section removed then it will be kind of tricky so for you to know if a site is powered by WordPress, the first thing you want to do is you just want to right click on your uh, section or empty section here. So by the way, I'm using Google Chrome for this one, but I'll be showing you how to do this on Mozilla Firefox as well. So here, just right click on it and you want to go to inspect. Now under inspect, the next thing that you want to do is you want to go to the section that says sources here. So you don't need to understand everything that's happening right now on your screen, but the only thing you want to do is you want to go to sources. Now, as you can see right now, it's going to say a few things here in the section that says pages. So it's going to say the website's name as well as folders here. So we have WP content and WP includes. So this means if it has WP on it, it means it's currently using WordPress. So it's one of our indicators here that it's currently using WordPress or it's being powered by WordPress. And yeah, so that's how you know if something is powered or a website is powered by WordPress. Now, when we go to our Mozilla Firefox browser here, how do we do the same thing? So same thing, you just want to right click on it and go ahead and go to inspect. And in here, we don't have this section that, like we have here, like sources, but we do have the bugger here. So we want to go to the bugger and from here, we could be able to see the folders that we saw before. So it's the same thing since it has WP dash content in it it means that it's currently being powered by wordpress and that's about it so thank you for watching if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comment section if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful you could use the link in the description to subscribe see you in the next video